Good Friday floss tube. It is Good Friday. So I thought I'd come and do a video. Of course I'm outside and there's noise happening and there's dogs all around me. So we'll see what happens. But goodness sakes, isn't it nice to get outside? I've been doing yard work and we're getting ready to plant a vegetable garden, which we've never done before, but we've talked about doing for years and we thought it would be a good time to do it. So that's what we're working on. But you're not here to talk about gardening, otherwise this wouldn't be floss tube. It would be garden tube or something. Anyway, how are you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying healthy. I hope you're staying mentally and spiritually healthy as well. It is of course Good Friday, so for me that means a lot. And um, I'm a little bit sad because usually our pastor does um, a service of darkness on Good Friday and it's always a very powerful and stirring presentation of the life and death of Jesus and of course now we're not gonna be able to do that so I suppose he could do it via video but it would really lose its impact because uh, we end surrounded in darkness anyway it's not happening so uh, today's gonna be a little bit different for us but that's okay um, because we're all in this together, right? So let's talk stitching. So first of all, I have, in this whole like quarantine time, I at the very, very beginning, I started, like before even stay at home orders were in place, I think, I started this piece and I have since finished it. I wish I could tell you who it was by But I cannot because I forgot to grab that paper I'll try to find it and put a link below but um, or put her name or whatever below um, anyway it's finished I have a whole stack of things that need to actually be like fully finished we'll see how that goes um, I don't know that I've worked on sorry all my stuff is down there so I keep squatting um, I don't know if I've worked on this one since we've been in quarantine, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway, just in case. <clears throat> I feel like I haven't worked on this one much. I am, and I also don't remember what I showed you last video. I should have checked, but I just, I wanted to just film um, but I do know that I need to change the colors for that lighter pink because that's just it's too wrong it's wrong so oh well I'm using DMC almost exclusively in this piece and uh, it doesn't always translate right so that's that Mostly the thing I've been working on, the very, very most, is the piece, um, gosh, I showed it in like one of my very earliest videos, probably my first video, um, and it's from the Folk Art Needlework book, I think, um, and I don't have a color picture of it, but it is two over one because it's stitched on eight o'clock and it's a full coverage and I got to tell you I don't like stitching two over one anymore it used to be that's all I did um, I only ever knew Ada and I only ever knew that you used two threads uh, sometimes more I didn't know you could use less but once I discovered that uh, it kind of changed my whole entire approach to or enjoyment of stitching I guess my dog is freaking out um, he wants to come out inside and play with the neighbor dog so so bad um, but anyway I am um, once I moved over to linen and stitching uh, with one thread it completely changed the game for me and I enjoy stitching actually a lot better especially once I started stitching in hand because it just kind of frees things up. It makes things go a little bit quicker and it feels more portable and less clunky for me. 
I know that there are some pieces that you just have, like, hey, how could you stitch that in hand? That would be insane. Though there might be people that do, in which case, I don't even know what to say to you guys. Um, but even this one, I'm stitching it in hand now. It, I originally started it with a hoop. And so going to in hand when you're doing two threads on Ada is very bulky for full coverage. It's very bulky. So my stitches aren't like super clean. I don't even care, honestly. I just wanna get the piece done. I think it's gonna look good no matter what. I'm just not being overly critical or overly careful with it. That's how I roll. Cause ain't nobody got time for that. I mean, people do have time for that. Right now, probably more than ever we have time for that. I don't have patience for that. <laughs> we'll say that much. So, um, one thing I wanted to show you guys is, let me check my minutes. Oh, okay, good. I got minutes left. My phone, for some reason, doesn't give me a lot of space to do a video. So I have to be very careful. Um, but one thing I wanted to show you guys is some um, patterns that Beth brought home for, for me from Nashville. That was the hardest sentence ever. <laughs> Doesn't Nashville feel like it was like 3,000 years ago? It, it's so crazy to me. I wasn't there, but goodness sakes. Like it, seriously, it feels like it was eons ago. And really, I think it's been like a month. A lot has happened in a month. I know it was before all the stay at home orders happened. And I think we're in week three, like the end of week three for that goodness sakes because I wasn't sure that Miss Beth was gonna be able to come home and that was gonna make me sad but she did so yay and she brought me presents um, so that's very cool so here they are from Stephanie at Lindy Stitches as for me I am poor and needy but the Lord takes thought for me <clears throat> it's very hard to read backwards <clears throat> This is Brenda Gervais, but coffee first. Yes. Brenda, true rewards, my friend. <clears throat> Here's a Plum Street um, from Paulette, Sweetheart Hill. I think it's kind of a nice little companion to Gentleman's Daughter. I don't know if it actually is. I don't know if they are companion pieces, but it kind of makes sense. <clears throat> and then finally, Teresa Kogut. Um, Newcastle bouquet. I didn't take them out of their sleeves, obviously. I love this moth. Is that a moth or a butterfly? I think it's a moth. Um, I just, I fell in love with that moth. So anyway, I just, I'm excited to do all of these, but that means that I have to order a lot of linen. And I'm not doing that right now. Um, Cause I don't know, are stores even like, like are the, like the distributory stores? So, I don't know, I don't know what's happening. My poor dog, he wants out so bad. I feel not guilty at all, actually. Um, okay, I need a drink of coffee. My kawaii cup. And let me tell you, Kauai. Let's talk Kauai for just a half a second. Because, so my daughter, if you don't know, is a senior in high school this year. School just got completely canceled for her. So her senior year kind of fell apart in the weirdest of ways. And clearly she's not alone. There are several states that have done that. There are a lot of seniors who are really mourning the fact that they're not getting a senior year. And it's hard. It's very sad. Um, we're also not sure what that means for her senior dance recital. And that's maybe the hardest part. I think I've talked about all that anyway. Um, but in the fall, actually like in August, we're supposed to be making a family trip out to Kauai to celebrate mine and my husband's 25th wedding anniversary, his parents' 50th wedding anniversary, and also take Molly to the school that she's gonna be going to um, out there in Kauai. And now we don't know what's gonna happen with that. We have no idea. I'm also supposed to be taking a trip to Wisconsin to meet my Norwegian family. 
um, in June and I don't know if that's gonna happen either and so it's weird that you know like I've made all these plans and I know y'all know this right um, that was my cat she just scared the cheapers out of me um, but you know you make all these plans and then all of a sudden it just through nobody's fault it just all goes away and or things are left very uncertain and un unknown and it's weird and I don't travel so um, this was gonna be like a very big traveling summer for me and I was very excited about all of it so we'll see what happens um, we're just trusting that you know by the time those trips are scheduled to arrive it'll happen and if not it's better safe than sorry so finally no not finally second to finally I wanted to show you a thing that so I put a call out to my local friends here to see if anybody had any hand sanitizer because I don't have any and I can't find any and it was stressing me out just a scotch so I had a lot of friends comment and I had one friend who said hey I can bring you some and she did the next day she's like I'll bring I'll leave it on your doorstep so finally I she comes to the doorstep I was busy working so I didn't go answer and hours later I go out and there on my doorstep is a bag. And there were two little things of hand sanitizer by Luna and Evergreen. Loon and Evergreen, I'm sorry. Smells really good, Ver lemon, verbena, and thyme. So good. Um, two things of hand sanitizer. And then this. <laughs> I died. I couldn't believe it. I was like, seriously. She, all she said she was going to bring was hand sanitizer. And then she gave me a gnome. It made my day. So cute. So I need to come up with a name for him. Um, I don't know. I don't know yet. But we'll come up with a name. If you have any names, suggestions, you feel free to put them below. Um, I just thought that was too cute. So. <clears throat> okay. Now we're in the finally mode. Like I said, it is Good Friday. So I wanted to read. I was planning on reading a poem, but I couldn't find a good one. So then I thought, I will read a psalm because a psalm is a poem. And this psalm, this is Psalm 22, and it's just a portion of it, but it's in the version called The Message. And if you're unfamiliar, The Message is kind of like modern day language of the Greek or Hebrew or Arabic or whatever it was written in. So this would have been written in Hebrew, I think. I think. And it would have been a, a modern day poem thousands and thousands of years ago. Uh, I think this was probably written by King David, but I'm not 100% sure. But here we are. It is 2020 and it's written now in modern language. Psalm 22, verses 22 through 31. Here's the story I'll tell my friends when they come to worship and punctuate it with hallelujahs. Shout hallelujah, you God worshipers. Give glory, you sons of Jacob. Adore him, you daughters of Israel. He has never let you down, never looked the other way when you were being kicked around. He has never wandered off to do his own thing. He has been right there, listening. Here in this great gathering for worship, I have discovered this praise life, and I'll do what I promised right here in front of the God worshipers. Down and outers sit at God's table and eat their fill. Everyone on the hunt for God is here, praising him. Live it up from head to toe. Don't ever quit. From the four corners of the earth, People are coming to their senses, are running back to God. Long lost families are falling on their faces before him. God has taken charge. From now on, he has the last word. All the power mongers are before him, worshiping. All the poor and powerless too, worshiping. Along with those who never got it together, worshiping. Our children and their children will get in on this as the word is passed along 
from parent to child. Babies not yet conceived will hear the good news that God does what he says. I found such comfort in that this morning because um, times are scary, times are weird, times are uncertain, but God is faithful and, and that gives me confidence, that gives me security, that gives me assurance that no matter how shaky the ground might feel, the God of all creation, the God of the universe, the God who created me, who designed me for a function, for a purpose, for a reason, he is in control. He's got the whole world in his hands. I don't need to worry about it. I need to be kind. I need to be compassionate. I need to extend grace and patience, and I need to love people around me, but I don't need to panic. I don't need to fret. I don't need to question the security of my future because my future is found in God. Friends, I want to just encourage you today, if you have nice weather, get out, enjoy it, even if it's just to sit in the sun for a few minutes and soak in some vitamin D. If you can, get out, take a walk, get your fingers in the dirt, play in the garden a little bit, call somebody you love and tell them that. Just go. Love. Spread kindness wherever you can. Even if all you can do is say, stay stuck in your home, you can still spread kindness right from there. All right, friends, I love you. Have a good Friday and have a happy Easter. I'll see you next time.